Hey, happy Friday to you. Today is the 25th of January. These are the Friday Funnies. First of all, let me apologize we're not in our regular studio today because literally I am on my way out the door to catch an airplane. But before I left, I wanted to make sure that you had your funnies because, hey, that's the kind of guy I am. Well, it's been an exciting week if you were President Obama, if you were one of the rest of us, you know, not so much. But if you miss, by any chance, any of President Obama's inaugural speech, fear not, because I listen to every word, and I have written a summary for your perusal that you can find on daleirvin.com slash blog. Also this week, we found out who's going to be in Super Bowl XLVII. It's either going to be the, or it's going to be both the San Francisco 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens. And I'm ready to make my prediction. You know, normally I make my prediction based upon the team name. San Francisco's team was named after a bunch of gold prospectors that got there in 1849. The Ravens are named after Edgar Allan Poe's poem of the same name. Now, I would think normally that a prospector could just kick the snot out of a raven, just swing his pickaxe at him a little bit, but then again, a raven can always peck the eyes out of a sleeping gold panner. So that's a wash. Next, we look at the coaches. They're two brothers. First time ever, two brothers. That's got to be a wash, too. We have to resort to our last thing, and that's picking the winner by anagram. By anagram. If you rearrange the letters in Baltimore Ravens, you will get earlobe varmints. Huh? If you rearrange the letters in San Francisco 49ers, you will get sniffy acorn constrainers. So there you go. Earlobe varmints or sniffy acorn constrainers, both of which would make a good name for a band. But you have to decide which one is tougher. And when you do, then you've got your winner. Dan, here come the winners in this week's news. <laughs> If you like women that are curvy, you may like Mikkel Ruffinelli. She's a 39-year-old resident of Los Angeles. Mikkel is 5'4", weighs 420 pounds. But the thing that sets her apart from other gals her size is that Mikkel has the world's widest hips. She's a mother of four. She has hips that measure 8 feet in circumference. That makes her actually wider than she is tall. And she said that she loves her wide hips, even though she's got to drive a truck because she can't get into a car, and she has to sleep in a bed that's seven feet wide. Currently, she doesn't have a job, but she is hoping to catch on with a professional hockey team looking for the ultimate goalie. Michelle Obama's pet cause is anti-obesity, encouraging kids throughout the land to eat right and exercise. And it's a very noble cause. I'm just wondering if it doesn't just apply to kids. Because the luncheon served at the president's inauguration earlier this week topped out at 3,000 calories per serving. That's more than the average person needs in an entire day. And it consists of lobster tails and buffalo and apple pie and a whole bunch of stuff in between. And the diners, those the big political uh, people who were there, they said they needed that much fuel for the grueling uh, riding and hand-waving that was coming up in the parade to follow lunch. You know, as one guest put it, eating and sitting can take a lot out of you and I need to rest up for next week's angioplasty. <laughs> We have long known that alcohol can affect your performance at work, but when it starts costing you money, this is when you've got a real problem. Ryan Hopkins is a 25-year-old man from Woodford County, Kentucky, and he needs to know when to say when, because he walked into a Little Caesars pizza outlet intent on robbing it. The problem was, he was so drunk he could not get the words out of his mouth to say this is a holdup. It came out something like, this is a holdup. Anyhow, one of the employees said, sir, you're drunk, please get out of here. And he left. He was later picked up by police and charged with public intoxication. They could not charge him with attempted robbery, however, because he didn't have a weapon on him. And quite honestly, he never got the words out of his mouth anyhow. His pizza, however, was delivered just as he ordered it, one half pepper schmoy and one half gishbombs. Hey, that's all I have for you this week. As I said, I'm on my way out to the airport. Please pass these along to all of your friends, and I will see you next week from a new Port of Call. Have a good week. Stay warm. See you in the air.